in listen only mode. Um, hello everyone and welcome to Live Blood London, a Neogenesis Systems webinar for uh, Q&A. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, we're hoping to answer your questions today on the uh, online training course and also questions about microscopes and uh, any other questions that you may have. So it is being recorded, so we will send you a copy of this if you haven't been able to register. Um, so questions. You should see a panel on your screen with a panel in there for asking questions. On Windows, it's the fourth, is it, let me see, it is, there's a, uh, a an orange arrow and that gets your control panel. So if you can click on your um, orange arrow, you get the control panel. And in there, you can actually uh, see a chat box. So you can type your messages in there. So if you could type your messages in there and send them in to us, um, we'll be able to answer them here live. If you do have any problems with that, then um, please just pop them on an email and send them in. So I'll be keeping my uh, eye on the um, emails as well. Okay, so um, just um, click on the full screen button, which is the third button down, and that will play the webinar in full screen. That's the best way to view the webinar. So is everyone okay with that? If you can just click a yes in your chat box, um, then I'll know that everyone's okay with that. Okay, fine. So let's get started. Um, we've had quite a few questions and um, we'll go through them here with Dr. Ocker. We have Dr. Ocker with us, our tutor. Hello, Dr. Ocker. Hi, hi. How are you doing? Very well, thanks. How are you? Good, thanks. Good. Right. Uh, well, the first question is uh, from Kathy. And it's regarding the legalities of offering live blood analysis in the USA. She is a practitioner with, without credentials in the medical industry. And she says, I'm an alternative wellness practitioner and minister offering inner healing, energetic healing, atomic structure, and now adding live blood analysis, which she says is an exciting way to have an internal view. So the legalities are, are my main concern, and I would like to hear how others are protecting themselves business-wise. So I assume, um, you know, this is to, for people in the U.S. So we understand that the legalities differ from state to state in the U.S. So if anyone listening knows anything about this or is practicing in the U.S., would you please email in any advice that you may have for Kathy? Meanwhile, we'll email our own um, U.S. attendees and students to see how they're dealing with this, and we'll send this on to you, Kathy. So we'll get that information together, and we'll send that um, to you. And do you have anything to add to that, Dr. Ocker? Yes, yes, Elizabeth. You know, um, for me, as far as I know, the most important thing uh, to avoid um, you know, and is doing anything that may be regarded as medical advice or medical treatment. And this is where a, uh, actually a very well-known live blood practitioner encountered problems in the USA. Um, he claimed that he could treat cancer and, you know, I've looked at his protocols and I'm sure that he had very good results. Um, but it is quite quite a, a blazon and, and not really a, a wise thing to do, um, you know, to go around making claims like this. And that's where potential problems could come in. So, you know, as far as I understand the legislation in the USA, uh, you can safely use uh, live blood analysis in a natural health practice. Um, as long as you're not claiming to practice medicine, uh, diagnose and treat uh, any diseases. So if you stay clear of that, um, and use it as a tool to assess your client's nutritional state um, as well as the condition of their terrain and also to educate them about their um, diet and lifestyle, uh, you should actually be quite safe. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, next question from Julie. What are the requirements to be able to perform live blood analysis on a client? I'm in Australia. Also, when you've done an analysis, what supplements do you recommend that you have actually seen 
a difference in the person's blood. How accurate are the live blood analysis readings, white dry blood reading and live blood reading? Over to you, Dr. Ocker, for that one. All right, all right. That's a very uh, important thing to cover. Um, you know, this, this test, live blood analysis, is actually very accurate. Um, as long as you're using it to detect the anomalies that it's actually been developed uh, to detect. So in other words, you know, if you are hoping to use uh, live blood analysis to diagnose medical diseases, well then you will be di disappointed in live blood analysis. But if you're using it to assess a, the state of someone's terrain and what the uh, current health priorities are in terms of lifestyle, uh, diet and other naturopathic interventions, um, you will find that it is very reliable in every case. Um, you know, I've seen it work so many times in my own practice um, that, you know, really at this point I don't really wonder about it anymore. Um, it is, of course, only as accurate as your uh, technique is, is repeatable. You know, this is very important and we do cover that in the uh, course as well, is that you're taking samples exactly the same way every single time so that you get repeatable and reliable uh, results there. Um, all right, now the difference between live blood and dry blood, we use live blood analysis to assess health at a cellular level. So we look at the actual blood cells and anything between the cells at a very high level of magnification. Um, now the dry blood test is performed to detect a number of other imbalances uh, that are not easily detectable in the live blood. Um, for example, parasites. Um, we can see evidence of parasites in the system uh, due to the effect of the toxins. Um, that the toxins have in the way that the blood clots in the dry blood test. Um, but the parasites themselves are not always visible in the uh, live blood samples. So looking at the results of both the live and the dry blood samples, along with the client's uh, symptoms and case history, um, then gives us a very comprehensive view of the uh, state of health. Uh, in terms of the supplements, uh, we, we have very specific supplements and products listed under each anomaly uh, in the manual. We have specific protocols that are outlined and the ingredients of the herbal medicines that we recommend are also listed in the manual. So you're able to source a similar product in your country. Um, but more importantly, uh, under each anomaly, we also list specific dietary and lifestyle interventions um, to help to uh, counter that specific anomaly. So that's, that's very important, you know, we can't just rely on supplements. Um, we also need to make fundamental changes in people's uh, lifestyles. Brilliant, thank you very much for that. Okay, um, Heather, my main question is whether I need to purchase a microscope prior to taking this course. Um, now, I usually say that the course doesn't require a microscope there to use during the actual course, but um, so it could be acquired after the course. Some attendees have acquired theirs after the course, after um, all the modules are recorded. So what they've done is they've done the course and then they've put it all into practice when they got their microscopes later. Um, so it's quite a people have done that, uh, so it really is, you know, entirely up to you. Uh, do you have anything to add to that, Dr. Ocker? Mm, well, I would agree with that, you know. Um, it's not absolutely essential to have a microscope when you enroll for the course. Um, you can learn the uh, theory during the course and then refer back to the practical elements uh, of the course once you've purchased the microscope. Uh, we do require case studies, though, uh, to issue the certificate. Um, and for that you obviously would need a microscope, but we haven't placed a specific time limit um, on these case studies, so you are able to submit them at a much later date um, for certification. Thank you for that. Not a lot of people actually realize the, um, the uh, fact that the uh, webinars are all recorded, um, so mm. I find it uh, very difficult to get that across to people that they can actually view the um, webinars or the modules as many times as they like, whenever they like. Yeah. So um, most people don't realize that. So Yeah, and it's very beneficial. I mean, you can always refer back to something if, uh, if you want to uh, review or revise something. It's, it's great that it's recorded. Yeah, it is one of the questions later, so I just thought I'd mention that um, before mm. we get to it. 
Robin, I made an appointment to have my own blood analyzed. However, when I asked if they could provide a video of the analysis, they told me they couldn't. Is it not possible to record the analysis through the attached camera on the microscope to a hard drive? Well, um, Robin, it's standard practice in live blood analysis to take pictures with a built-in camera and send the pictures to the client as well as retaining a copy. This is used for comparing results at a later date, also monitoring the progress as well as the, as well as the efficacy of the protocols or lifestyle changes suggested. Now, our latest microscopes can do this without having to attach any video software. Older microscopes, I understand, may need added software. Is that correct, Dr. Ocker? Well, you know, the, the newest cameras still use software, um, but it's just that the software is loaded on the actual camera and then automatically installs on the uh, user's computer. Um, now, this latest camera is also compatible with Windows and Mac, uh, Apple Mac, which makes it much, much easier. Oh, brilliant. Um, I know of a few, yeah, yeah, they're actually very, very user-friendly as well. Um, now I know of a few systems that are sold without a, a video capture card, um, so then that means that you would have to run the um, camera through a television instead of a computer. Um, but this obviously is not recommended because then you're not able to uh, take any still images or recorded videos for um, you know comparing the results later on. And um, the the latest um, microscopes with the latest cameras with the attached video software, uh, you can actually do recordings on that as opposed to just taking pictures. Yeah, absolutely, you can. And uh, you know the other great thing about these cameras is that they are um, very high resolution, you know, it's a proper high definition um, image, so if you're um, using a bigger screen, um, you know, you can even put it onto a, a huge projector or a massive screen in your office if you want to really be um, sort of really professional, yeah. um, but it wouldn't pixelate at all, it's, it's a really, really high definition. Uh, camera. Right, and do you think uh, I've, I've, you know, only ever come across people uh, giving clients pictures of the live blood analysis? Do you give uh, videos or just pictures? In general, in most of my cases, I just take still images, you know, just pictures. Um, if there's something uh, moving around in the blood um, and we want to record that, um, then I would take a, a small, short video clip. Um, video clips obviously are quite large files, so they take quite a bit of space, um, you know, so oh, to right. do this routinely with every single client uh, would fill up your hard drive right. <laughs> fairly quickly and you'd have to back up uh, quite regularly, um, but still images wouldn't be, wouldn't be a problem at all. Right, okay, thank you. Douglas, I would like advice on the best micro microscope system to purchase for a naturopathic physician with several years of experience but who is new to live blood analysis. So I suggest uh, students request a callback. Um, it's a big investment and Dr. Ocker can advise on the best microscope for each student based on their needs, their climates, etc. Um, but over to you Dr. Ocker on that one. All right, yeah, absolutely. You know, we've, we've got quite a few systems or quite a few options available um, of systems that we've researched and we've developed uh, systems specifically for live blood analysis. Um, now, these microscopes have features that you won't find in any other microscopes and these fe features make them ideal for a live blood practice. Um, you know, another issue to keep in mind is that they have been put together in such a way that they're actually very simple to use, um, they're quite user friendly, um, there's not a lot of uh, uh, settings that need to be changed between um, live blood and bright field and dark field and going over to dry blood analysis, so um, you know even with someone who hasn't, hasn't ever used a microscope before, um, it wouldn't be extremely difficult to learn uh, how to use these microscopes. So. Um, you know, I'm willing to, to discuss all the different features with, um, with anyone who's interested. Um, you can contact me and we can chat about it at any time, absolutely. Good. So um, I'll give you the um, information on where to send your email and then we'll arrange the call back for you. So 
please do email in and we'll, uh, we'll help you with as much as we possibly can. Um, thank you, Dr. Ocker. Um, the next question is, is the course doable in the USA because of the time difference? So um, the course is doable, this is what we touched on earlier, anywhere with an internet connection because one of the main advantages of the course is that all of the modules are recorded. Each week the module is uh, recorded and sent out to the students soon after the live webinar. So if you're in a different time zone, you will get the um, webinar sent out to you probably around 8 or 9 o'clock GMT time, which will probably be, um, well, I don't know what it is in, uh, in sort of Australia, New Zealand, but in America it's usually around, say, uh, 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So then you can watch it at your leisure in the evening. Um, so this way, <coughs> students can watch the material as many times as they like and keep on repeating the material. This is not something that you get in a course that's held in a center. You only get the material once, you have to either remember or take notes. But with the online course, you get all the material for as long and as often as you like to keep repeating. So that is the uh, huge advantage of doing the online course. Uh, and of course, you know, no travel or um, expenditure on uh, hotel and accommodation. Um, anything to add to, to that, Dr. Ocker? No, absolutely, I agree with that. You know, the going for a, a live blood workshop, um, you know, where you have to travel, people often are suffering with jet lag in the first two days, and then they have to, you know, travel back home. Uh, so, you know, they're often are completely overwhelmed, um, and they often don't don't uh, you know get the advantages or the benefits out of the uh, training that they that they should be able to. Um, and there's a lot of information that people then miss. So this is, I think, the, the most ideal way of doing it um, because you can do it at your, at your leisure whenever it suits you. You can listen to these webinars and as many times as you like. So it really is um, the, best, the best way to do this. Uh, good. Thank you very much. Um, next question is, just in regard to what exactly is the accreditation certification also? cost of course and cost of microscope, I am in New Zealand. So over to you for that one, Dr. Ocker. Alright, well currently we are accredited by the uh, Complementary Medical Association in the UK. Um, the course is uh, priced at uh, £5.99. Uh, pounds. Um, now there is a currency converse, converter that's sent out in the on information pack um, and then all the prices of the uh, different microscope systems are on the website. Uh, that's www.livebloodonline.com. Um, and then if you uh, would like more information on the differences between the different microscope systems, um, please feel free to email me um, or Elizabeth with those questions and we can discuss them uh, with you in detail. Okay, thank you very much. Well, I think that's it, Dr. Ocker. We don't seem to have any more questions. Um, let me just check, right. check the email, see if there's anything there. Uh, if you do have any more questions, please just email them in to us and we can um, uh, answer them uh, either by call back or Skype call or by email. So, no, that seems to be it. Um, so thank you very much for joining us. We look forward to hearing from you. And um, as I say, in, email us for any info. Um, we look forward to hopefully you joining us on the course, which starts January the 7th at 7 p.m. Um, so we wish you a very Merry Christmas and a very happy and prosperous New Year. And thank you very, very much for joining us. And thank you very much, Dr. Oka. Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me and uh, looking forward to the new year. Yes, um, thank you very much. Bye for now. Bye-bye.